go, baby. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's the Urban Therapy with Sun Show. We about to get this thing on the go. That's my word. Oh, uh, it's going to be all right. Yeah, you know it's going to be all right. Thank you. Uh, and everything is going to be all right when I pick up the camera and the mic. Uh, so today on the Urban Therapy with Sun Show, we're talking about how to stop someone from mistreating you. Oh, yeah, there are ways to stop people from mistreating you. And some of the ways are pretty elementary. Some of the ways are uh, things that we've, we've tried before, but we didn't really, we may not have really realized how to tweak them a little bit to the point where we could yield the results that we were looking for. But nobody likes to be dissed. Nobody likes to be embarrassed. Nobody likes to be abused. But what can you do? Are you stuck? Do you have to go through what we're going to talk about it today? And, and I would probably gamble and say that everyone has been mistreated by someone sometime in some place in their lives and nobody likes that shit it ain't legit word now some of the things we're going to talk about are things that that you can do to others to show them how to treat you better and uh, and some of the things are things that we can do ourselves because one thing you can't do very well is change someone else. But I'm not saying that it's impossible because I know that it's the truth. It's possible. And that's my word of life. And we're going to do this thing. Stop treating them trite word. It's going to be okay. We do this show every day. It's a Sunday. And I feel it kind of good in my own way. Yo, chill, sit back, relax, ill. We will break it all down. We'll feel a little better at the end of the sound work. So that's what we're talking about today on the Urban Terror People Sun Show. What's going on? T carry right morning, noon, and night. It's always great to have my peoples going directly into your site. And Carol Chamberlain, my good friend, it's good to see you coming on through. New know we win. And uh, Stacy White, that's right. I'm very glad you came on through. It's not late night, so I'm glad you're here. What's up, my dear? Everything is going to be all right because we care. How to keep somebody from mistreating you? How to keep somebody from mistreating you? Yeah, we're going to get into that right, right about now. Huh? So let's get into it. Urban Therapy with Sun, Sun 752. This is the Urban Therapy with Sun Show. We do this every single Sunday from 11 a.m. till around 12.30-ish. And the reason that we say 12.30-ish is because sometimes it gets so heated that we just have to do a little OT on a Sunday, and it is Sunday. This is the show where adults come out and play with other adults. We laugh, we cry, we argue, fuss, and fight, go both back and forth with each other, busting up all crazy. We take an introspective look into our own personality to see the way that the universe projects us into this thing called the world and try to figure out this thing called life. I'm your host, Son752, a.k.a. Omar with the rrr. And if you can't say Omar with the rrr, well, then you just say Omar with the R. This is the Urban Therapy with Sun show, and I feel like a real man should. I hope y'all feel like real men and women should also. So today, we're going to talk about how to stop somebody from mistreating you. Now, by a show of hands, who has been mistreated? Within the sound of my voice, probably everybody. Everybody has been through some situation where somebody wasn't treating them the way that they want to be treated. And speaking of being treated the way that you want to be treated, let's take a look at that phrase for a minute. Let's take a look at the phrase, the sentence, treating somebody like you want to be treated. Because it's a popular thing to say. Yeah, I treat people the way I want to be treated. I treat people the way I want to be treated. So I know if I like it, then you'll like it. We say that without even thinking about it. We don't we 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 say that without even taking into consideration the selfishness of it. Now, on the surface, we're talking about treating somebody nice or being gentle with somebody, or or being kind to somebody, respectful of somebody, because we would like to be treated gently and gently and kind and, and respectfully. So there are good intentions there, but we have to understand the power of words. 
and words have extreme power out here. People all are, are, are always talking about how words mean nothing. It's all about actions. Actions speak louder than words. And they don't. They don't. We'll get into that in a minute. Words speak the loudest out of anything. And, and think about it. Most people who are mentally and emotionally scarred for life are mentally and emotionally scarred for life over something that somebody said to them. Something that somebody said to them that made them feel some kind of way that derailed them from whatever sense of, of self that they had before. That's what words do, especially at a young age. But like I said, we'll get into that. We're going to get into that. Let's go back to the original thing. Treating somebody the way you want to be treated. I treat people the way I want to be treated. In other words, I treat people nice. In other words, I treat people good. In other words, I treat people with respect. In other words, I treat people kindly. In other words, I'm, I'm generous to people. In other words, I'm nice to people. Well, everybody doesn't treat everybody respectfully, nice, gently, kind, and as generously as everybody else. So why would you measure yourself? How about, how about we start with finding out exactly what somebody else wants? And then let's treat them that way. How about we change the, the, the sentence from I treat people the way I want to be treated to I treat people the way they want to be treated? And how about I train people to treat me the way I want to be treated? Because I don't like the same things that everybody else likes. If I treat people the way I want to be treated, then maybe I will treat everybody to a to a, a, a big juicy steak dinner with some big steak fries on the side, a little bit of salt and ketchup on them joints, salt, salt and pepper, and maybe some ketchup on them joints if, 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 if need be, with some Worcestershire sauce. Yeah, a big, big bottle of Worcestershire sauce for that big juicy ass steak. And I went, I'm talking about big center cut steak with the bone in about an inch. I want my steak to be no, no, no less than an inch thick. That's the way I want to be treated. You might be a vegetarian. You might be a vegan. You might just not like steak. You might have some trouble with your teeth that won't allow you to chew a steak. It sounds like a small thing and maybe just a technicality, but when you start, when you start honing in on the small details of a person and insist that other people hone in on the small details about you, then you start to get a more, a, a closer and more um, personal approach to your treatment of others and other people's treatment of you. And people will notice that you're treating them the way they want to be treated. Don't treat them the way you want to be treated. Treat them the way they want to be treated. Open your mouth and ask them what they want. And then open your mouth and tell people what, what you want. You know how many people get teased about certain things and never open their mouths and say, you know, I don't really like that. Instead, they'll say things like, well, I know they don't mean anything by it, so it's okay. I don't mind. Little things. For example, your name. Some people insist on their name being pronounced a certain type of way. They insist on it. And there are some people who get offended by the way that people want their name to be pronounced, even if the way that they want their name to be pronounced is the right way. But sometimes people disregard the way people say their names. Uh, you know, like, your name is Nicole, but I'm going to take the liberty of calling you Nikki. You might not like Nikki. They might not like Nikki. So if your name is Nicole and you don't like to be called Nikki, maybe you should tell people to say, you know, I understand why you call me um, um, Nikki, but I like Nicole. I prefer to be called Nicole. It will separate you 
from a lot of people that's that are named Nicole that go by the nickname Nikki. It's not that hard to do. It doesn't take much longer to say Nicole than it does Nikki. They both two syllables. It's just that one syllable is a little bit longer than the other syllable. You know what I'm saying? They be like, I call they call me Nikki for short. It's two syllables. Yeah, but Nicole takes longer to say. You got to be like Nicole. Meanwhile, you just be like Nikki. I'm like, well, what if I said Nikki? Anyway, it's a small detail. But once you start to, to alert people about who you are and what you want, then they won't have excuses to be able to just do, do to you whatever they want to do to you. To make you feel however they want you to feel. And that's what mistreatment is all, all about. A lot of times it's about people trying to make you feel the way they want you to feel. There may be some something about you that makes them want to make you feel bad or treat you bad or mistreat you or whatever the case may be. And it's not fair, but if you let them get away with it, then they'll continue to do it. So your name, your name. Like, for example, my first name is Milton. But nobody in my family, including my mom and dad, has have ever called me Milton. I've never been called Milton by my brothers and sisters. I have other brothers whose name is Milton. You know how that goes. You know, I mean, multiple kids, multiple baby moms, all that kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Well, I want my baby, I want my son to be named after this. Okay. I mean, what my, my father's name was Milton. Nobody called him Milton that I that when I was growing up. I never heard anybody called him Milton. They called him Mac. And guess what? He was comfortable with Mac. I don't know if he cared one way or another about his first being called by his first name. And I'm sure that growing up in his household where everybody's last name was McIntyre, I'm sure that they didn't call him Mac. What would make him a Mac over anybody else? So when he went into the army, people started calling him Mac, short for McIntyre. And with my dad, I'm sure that if he had a problem being called Mac, he would have he would have expressed it. I'm sure of it. I'm absolutely sure of it. So when we talk about how to stop someone from mistreating you, one of the techniques that we can employ is to be a little bit more verbally expressive about the things that we want, the things that we like, and how we would like to see things play out. It ain't that hard to do. And that's my that's my whole point. We can do this. And it's a start. It's a start. Now, I know, like, throughout the course of this show, people are going to be like, well, yeah, yeah, all right, that's one thing. But you you talk about how to keep people from mistreating you. So I need to know how I can stop my husband from beating on me, or how I can stop my boss from 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 uh, belittling me, or how I can stop my 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 brothers and sisters and and, and, and my family from always sponging off me and, and, and not being grateful or appreciative. Well, we the things that we're going to talk about today are the things that we can get the ball rolling and getting those kind of things out of our lives. So many times when we start talking about uh, stopping for somebody from mistreating us or abusing us, the first one of the first things we, we think about is escape. We think about running away or deleting people or leaving people behind, you know, getting them out of our lives. Toxic people got to go. It's the first of the month. I said, toxic people got to go first of the month. Yo, pick block, first of the month. Tick tock, first of the month. Facebook at Twitter, first of the month. Yo, this great statue. First, 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 first of the month. Got to get rid of the front first of the month. Yeah, we can do that. We can always escape. But if you don't change the things about yourself that is attracting 
those people to feel like they have the freedom to mistreat you, you'll get people out of your life and get other people right back into your life that will do the same things that the people that you just put out of your life were doing. You can't escape yourself. You can't. So I think that it's important today to talk about the things that we can do to ourselves and for ourselves that will help us to get a better result about the, the way that we are treated. And we can also talk about what other people, what we can do with other people in order for us to uh, get a better result. So let's get into it. First of all, if y'all would like to call into the show, I invite y'all to call into the show. And the number to call is area code 319-527-6199. That's the number to call. I said a 319-527-6199. Yes, 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 y'all. I said a 319-527-6199. Yeah, get on the line. I said a 319-527-6199. Yeah, get your shine, baby. Oh, uh. get your shine, baby. Oh, uh. get your shine, baby. Oh. Uh. Get your shine, baby. Oh, 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 uh. get your shine, baby. Three one nine five two seven six one nine nine, baby. It is the Urban Therapy with Sun Show. Even though we have the uh, Daily Go Get Emism backdrop, I don't always feel like uh, I can get a little lazy sometimes, and I don't always feel like changing the backdrop. You know what I mean? So, I, plus, since I don't get to get, do the, the Daily go get a business show in its entirety, you know, nowadays, you know, I want to keep that in the back. Yeah, yeah, make sure I, y'all keep that in y'all mind. So, so, yeah, a detailed plan. Well, should I say a plan to relay the details of how you would like to be treated to others? Let's talk about that for a second. Why would we let somebody say our name wrong? Or why would we let somebody call us a nickname that we didn't like? I know. You know, we, we don't want to offend people. I mean, wait, when you really think about it, how crazy is that? We take the high route not to offend somebody who is calling us something that we are offended by. If your name is William, but you don't want to be called Bill, why would you let somebody call you Bill? Your name is Robert. You don't want to be called Bob. Like my name isn't Bob. I know people who are named Bob and whose name is not Robert. So why, why would I let you call me Bob? That's not my name. I mean, you could at least say Rob. But you just want to take the liberty and call me Bob? Mm -mm. But you got to let people know. You got to let people know because they won't know if you don't tell them. And that's and that will be the excuse that they will use. When, when you finally get to the point where you snap on them or when you... Or when they hear from somebody else that you don't really like them or whatever, they like, but what did I ever do to, do to you? Well, you, you call me out of my name all the time. Like, what are you talking about? I don't curse at you. I know, but you call me a different name than what my name is. I told you before that my name is my, my name is Robert. And I really prefer to be called Robert. The whole thing, Robert. Even if even if you want to soften your approach and and say something like, listen, the, one of the reasons that I like to be called Robert is, is because my grandmother used to call me Robert and, you know, I really loved and respected her. And she was one of the most influential people in my life and my life. And she always called me Robert. So every time I hear that that name, it makes me think of her and it gives me a good feeling. That's the reason I want to. That's what the reason I go by Robert and not Rob or, or, or Bob. It doesn't always you don't owe people the truth about why you need to be treated with the same type of respect that you're willing to give others. You don't need to be 100% truthful about it. Look, I gave you a reason and you still chose to call me this. Well, now we can deal with each other accordingly. Now I don't have an obligation to treat you with any type of respect or kindness because I gave you the simplest of tasks. Just address me by my name when you call, when you call me. You don't even have to say my name, but if you're going to say my name, at least say the right name. You could have been like, "Hey, what's up, my man? Hey, buddy. Hey, hey, friend. Whatever." If you don't want to say my name, but if you say my name, say my name right. Well, I'm not going to answer. 
You understand what I mean? So these are just small little building blocks on how to train people uh, uh, on how to treat you better. Small things. Because once you start highlighting the small things, you can go to bigger things. Or bigger things may not ever come up because you already got the ball started. So people are going to act a little funny in the beginning like, oh, he's funny about this. Or he's funny about that. Or she's funny about this or that. Blah, 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 blah. And you could be like, yep, I sure am. But uh, just understand that I'm a good person. I'm a friendly person, but this is this is this is what it is. So when we start talking about treating somebody the way they want to be treated, ask them, what do you like? If you were dating somebody, and you know what? This is this is an interesting thing too. If you were dating somebody, or if there was somebody out there that you wanted to date. More than likely, you would try to find out what they liked and then try to deliver it to them so that you can get in their good graces, so you can date them and have fun with them and eventually build a life together, have sex, all that kind of stuff. Whatever it is that you're seeking out, that's what you would do, more than likely. So why not take that approach with, um, with other people? Treat them the way they want to be treated. Ask them what they like. Because if you ask people what they like, it's going to stick with them. Because most people out here are not asking people or, or, or are all that concerned with what, what people like individually, exclusively, personally. So once you start getting giving that personal touch, personal touch, personal attention, individual attention, you can start to expect that. So you can start to stop people from mistreating you because you're telling them this is what I like. So whenever they step out of line and do the opposite of what you told them, now you can call them on that. Now you might be asking, well, what if they keep doing it after you call them on it? Now you have a decision that you need to make. You can remind them again. If this is, if this isn't the fourth or fifth time that you've already reminded them, and watch their watch their reaction about when you remind them. Like, if you remind them and they're like, "Oh, you, I'm sorry, I forgot," blah blah blah, then you know that they're at least paying attention or they are at least concerned about what you're saying or how you're moving and what you're doing. If it's like you tell them and they're like, uh, then you know what you're working with. The problem is the per the people who who are like silent or condescending in their in their body language. Well, the problem with that sometimes is those are our girlfriends and our boyfriends and our spouses. That's the problem with that. Sometimes those are our co-workers. You know, work can be a... It can be a place of contention. You go to a place to make money. That's your that's your primary goal. I'm going there to, to make money, to make a living, so I can keep a roof over my head and clothes on my back and shoes on my feet and a car to drive and, and tuition that I can pay. And then you deal with coworkers that cloud that whole issue. You would think nobody is there to make any money. They're just there to bullshit with each other, escape doing what they signed for, and get on your nerves. So getting back to treating people the way they want to be treated, ask them. Like I said, I might like I might like a steak dinner or fried chicken, whatever. But everybody doesn't want that, or they may not be in the mood for that. So when you train yourself 
to treat people the way they want to be treated instead of the way that you want to be treated, even though acknowledging that treating people the way that you want to be treated is, is a, I get it. It's a kind gesture. It's a, it's a gesture of respectability. It's a gesture of, of uh, fairness. I get it. But sometimes the way that we program things in our head, the way that we program things in our head comes out a certain type of way and we find it hard to escape it. My brother from another mother, Norris Hill, sit back, relax, and chill. Yo, thanks for coming through. Real. And Layla Harris, thanks for coming on through. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Yes, you too. Um, Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, Robbie Robin Ming, my big sis here doing her thing. She's something like a queen for a king. It's no thing. Okay. Let me see what we got. Robbie Robbie Ming says, how about if you use your middle name instead of your first name? Whatever the case may be, right? Whatever. You just need to let you let people know how you want them to say your name. Because it's important. Your name is your handle. And when you know, you know how it is. When somebody says your name, you get a certain vibration. Especially when somebody that you like says your name. Have you ever heard some heard somebody say your name and it just gives you this warm, fuzzy feeling? It was something about the way that they said your name. It might have been somebody of the opposite sex. It might have been somebody of the same sex, but there was something so, so, so gentle, so, so um, unique, so, so individualistic about the way that they say said your name. It just made you feel some kind of way. It was like, hey, I like that. Well, wouldn't it be nice? To get a similar feeling like that every time somebody calls your name? What if somebody called your name correctly, but they yelled it all the time? Robin! Robin, we about to go get some ice cream. Do you want some ice cream? Like, yeah, you like them. I, some ice. You like ice cream and you might want some ice cream. But you don't want to hear your name yelled all the goddamn time? But you know what happens a lot of times, Rob? We write it off as, well, that's just their way. That's just their way. They don't mean nothing by it. Fuck that. The title of this show is How to Stop People from Mistreating You. Robin! We have a Pollyanna for Christmas. You want to pick your Pollyanna, Pollyanna Robin? I, I know. I mean, I might be sounding a little nitpicky about it, but it's real. The same way if, if somebody says, said your name so low that you couldn't fucking hear them. Robin. You steady doing your work or whatever you was doing. Robin. Like, I can't hear you. I didn't know you was calling me. Yeah, I was calling you. I can't hear that, and I'm not hard of hearing. Well, that's just the way I talk. Okay, all right, that's the way you talk. But if you want me to hear you, you got to speak up a little bit when you say my name. So, so yeah, I, whether you use your middle name, a combination between your first name and your last name, or your middle name and your first name, or whatever, a nickname, or you know, what whatever name it is that you came up. That, that makes you feel comfortable, then that should be what people call you. You know, and, and I know that some people have outlandish nicknames that they pick, and you're like, come on now. Come on now. I get that part of it, too. So within reason, you know what I mean? Listen, you know how... Look how many people tried to keep calling Muhammad Ali Cassius Clay after he changed his name. He changed his name. It's his name to change. You know, people be like, well, I'm going to call you what your mama called you. Whatever your parents named you, that's what I'm going to call you. Oh, yeah? Well, guess what? I changed what my, what my, what my parents um, named me too. And guess what? They call me 
what I changed it to. I'm not Cassius Clay. I'm Muhammad Ali. I'm not Stokely Carmichael. I'm a, you know, what Stokely Carmichael changed his name to. I can't remember right now. My bad. Anybody remember what Stokely Carmichael changed? Peace to Stokely Carmichael. What was this? It was some African type shit. So Emily is in the uh Emily is in the uh is in the uh is in Instagram, is on Instagram calling me Milton. See, like I said, treat people the way they want to be treated. Mm, see, they might do it and they might not. No big deal. Because I know how to ignore people. So um let me see. Um TK right says that's what I prefer, Robin, but I don't see I'm, I'm looking for I'm looking for the I'm looking for the pre the pretense to that. I don't see nothing. I don't see nothing. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Okay. Oh, TK, right? Says, especially since people mispronounce my first name all of the time. Okay. All right, let me see. Robbie Rob says, I now use my middle name on my answering machine, and my crazy family asks, who is Michelle? <laughs> my brother from another mother, Norris Hill, says, I ignore those that address me by a former street alias. See? Because that, that may give you a feeling. It may take you back to a time that you're not, you're not, you're not at anymore. Like you, it might make you feel some kind of way. Like, mm, nah, nah. When my name was Killer, that's when I was killing. My name is not Nickelbag Nars no more. No, it's not Nickelbag Nars. I was you know, no more Nickelbag. No more Nicks. No more Nicks. Don. No, don't call me that no more. Um, Robert says, on some of my emails, I use Miss Miss Mickey. Okay. All right. Let me see. <laughs> no, it says, I didn't have a street name until later when I moved to a different city. Okay. Kwame Torre. That is his name. <laughs> That's his name. You know what I mean? My brother from another mother, Nars Hill, he's a wealth of information. What's up, Eric Stefan? Popping in from, from Sweden. That's what's up. Carol, Carol Chamberlain says, I hate to be called Carolyn. My name is Carol. Is your name Carolyn? I'm just asking. I'm not going to call you that, but is it? <laughs> You know, sometimes when you find out people's um, um, whole name, you're like, oh, shit. Because sometimes when they shorten their name, you think that it's short for something. Like, if somebody's name is Will, you think their name is William? And sometimes it's Wilfred or something like that. And you're like, dang, you don't look like a Wilfred. I ain't, you know. Like, your name is Wilhelmina? But that's a girl's name. Oh, my bad. My bad. My bad. But that's what we're talking about today, y'all. How to keep people, excuse me, how to stop people from mistreating you. How to stop people from mistreating you. And we were talking about open communication, letting people know what you like versus what you don't like. It's a start. It's a start. 
Now, once you identify the people who don't want to comply with the things that you have communicated to them that you don't like or that you do like, then we can talk about later on down the line, uh, you know, sifting people out, funneling people out, eliminating people, adding in better people. But let's let's concentrate for the moment on changing our, our own behavior how we can start to do certain things, practice certain things, put certain things into practice and a routine or, or a regiment or um, a system, a discipline that we can reasonably expect a better result than we have been getting before. So let's start with ourselves because we know we can change ourselves. We know that we can do that. Changing other people will come no sooner than we change ourselves as far as their interaction with us and our interaction with them, our experience with them and their experience with us. We got to work on us first. So let's work on our communication. Let's work on letting people know what we like and what we don't like instead of letting them get away with doing whatever they want to do. Let them, let's stop letting people treat us the way that they want to be treated and treat us the way that we want to be treated. And let's treat other people the way that they want to be treated and stop treating people the way that we want to be treated. Keeping in mind, once again, that yes, we know that it's a noble act to treat people the way that we want to be treated. We get it. However, let's, let's, let's concentrate on the details for this exercise so we can reasonably say, I gave you what you wanted. Now I need what I need. And, and it didn't cost, cost me anything to give you what you wanted. It's not going to cost you anything to give me what I want. But if, if we give each other what we want, then we can start to concentrate on harmony, friendship, partnership, long lasting, long term, meaningful, beneficial to, 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 to each other. Let's start to improve our quality of life through this. No one likes to be mistreated. No one likes to be teased. No one like, you know, at work, there's a reason why you can't make sexual advances or why uh, making, making little snide comments about people's appearances is frowned upon. There's a reason that HR gets involved. So I don't care if the woman at your job's ass is fat and wide and juicy and plump, bigger than Alaska. She got a Texas-sized ass. But if you say that, there's going to be mad problems for you. There's a reason for that. And there's a reason why you can't... There's a reason why... That why you can not only not say that openly and quite honestly, honestly and openly, but there's also reasons why you can't just call somebody by their street name, shout out to Nars Hill, at work. Like this ain't the place for that. I know in my last job, I had to shut that down. They was trying to call me Omar. Yes, I prefer to be called by a call Omar, but when I'm at when I'm at work, ain't none of that going on. I ain't Omar. You call me Milton. That's how you that's how I know where somebody knows me from. You call me Milton. I know you don't know me. You don't know me. That means you didn't grow up. I've never been called Milton in any of my classes from get set which they call preschool now, all the way up into college. The only times I was ever called Milton was on the first day of school when they took roll in a brand new school. Other than that, I sh that got shut down day one. Milton McIntyre, I, um, I go by Omar. Thank you. From then on, it was Omar from the first day of school to summer vacation. 
So if you call me Milton, I'm like, you are either, I either know you from work or I know you as a bill collector. It really means that I don't know you very well. It means that I had to have met you somewhere in my 20s because none of my jobs as a teenager called me that. So, so I respect the same process with other people. Yeah, yeah, the boy tried to, you know, he tried to bust a move. Hey, yo, Omar. Hold on. Then I shut it down because he saw the show. People see this show, they see a different side of me, and now they think they know me. I'm like, mm -mm. it's Milton in here. Ain't no Omar. Don't know Omar work here. Ask anybody in this building about Omar. He don't work it. Interestingly enough, there was an Omar that did work where I worked last, and he and he was the supervisor of security. So they called his name a lot, and I would be like, every time they would call, and he spelled it O M A R R, and I was like, every time they would call him, I'd be like, oh shit. So stuff like that. So, you know, I want to impress upon y'all that before things get out of hand, but before things get to an abusive state, they start off small and they build their way up. And sometimes we have to take responsibility for allowing it to get to that point. And one of the reasons why it gets to that point gradually is because we didn't do enough or do anything in order to shut it down. We didn't do anything in the beginning to make sure that it didn't get to that point. We didn't do our due diligence. We did not handle our BI. We didn't handle our business as far as making sure that people understood where we were coming from. And I would say never be embarrassed to insist on being treated the way you want to be treated. Never be embarrassed or shy away from making sure that people understand how you, you need to be dealt with. Because everybody has their little quirks and their little innuendos and their little, their little hijinks and their little, you know. Everybody has a different screw that they need to be turned and that needs to be turned in order to be tightened up. We can't treat everybody the same way. We can't cookie cutter our way when dealing with people because that makes other people think that it's okay. It's okay for them to cookie cutter treat us. Well, I treat everybody the same, but maybe you shouldn't. And I don't need to be treated the same as them because you might treat everybody the same and that treatment might be bad. And I don't want anything to do with being treated poorly. So, a lot of y'all who are listening to the show, by the way, make sure y'all hit that like button, man. Hit the like button. Make sure that y'all share the show. Make sure that y'all subscribe to the channel. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, this is the Urban Therapy with Sun Show. I'm your host, Sun752, and we're talking about how to stop people from mistreating you. Now, I know a lot of people are, are probably tuning into the show wondering, like, well, when is he going to get into, like, how to stop, how to stop your man or your woman from cheating on you? Or how to stop how to stop your man from, from beating on you, cheating on you, beating on you, cheating on you, beating on you, cheat, cheat, to cheat, cheat, but beat, beat. I get it. Well, we're gonna walk our way to that. We're gonna walk our way up to that. Because once the ball has gotten rolling, the once the ball has started rolling towards full outright abuse it has taken small steps so i want to concentrate on the steps oh shit 
Oh, damn. Oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. I know what I did on Blog Talk that messed it up. Uh oh. <laughs> My bad. I didn't schedule the show for long, but you know what? It didn't say. It didn't say to uh it didn't you know normally it would be like 10 seconds left you know it didn't do that hmm hmm I know what I can do I can make another show I can Go to blow talk side. But you know what? I think we're going to have to just keep it moving. So it won't be no calls today. Sorry about that. How'd that happen? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Anyway. Yeah. Um, as far as full, full blown abuse is concerned, we got to walk our way up to that. You know, let's take let's take care of the, the smaller details. You know, we have to let people know how we want to be treated and insist on it. The same way that you would follow through on if somebody owed you money. If somebody owed you money, you would insist on them paying you back, especially if it was a considerable amount of money and you needed it. And we all need our money. So I think that there are some things that we need more than money and peace of mind and uh, good feelings are something that I know that I personally need more than I need money. When I'm feeling good about myself, when I'm feeling good about the world and, and, and about life, then I'm able to go out and make some money. I'm comfortable when I'm stressed out, when I'm scared, when I'm uncomfortable, when I'm, when I'm, when I'm, uh, when I'm, nervous and worried and I'm you know afraid I can't make no money I don't even care about it it's like having to climb up out of a hole that you didn't dig for yourself but somebody dug it and pushed you into that bitch surely sure the world's most precious and greatest pearl in the world surely sure the world's most precious and greatest pearl in the world what's going on my Good, 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 good. Great to see me some you. It's true. You know how we do. So yeah, how to treat, how to stop people from mistreating you. I mean, you know, it's easy for us to go into the whole. Well, you know, somebody don't treat me right, then I just, I just get rid of them. How long does it take before you get rid of people? How many chances did you give them? before before that happened i mean with social media and stuff like that there seems to be a whole lot of people just having high expectations of people without doing any work or or doing anything putting anything inside in order to make sure that they can that they can withdraw something how are you gonna do how are you gonna not deposit any money in the bank but try to withdraw money from the bank it doesn't work that way so why would it work in any other area of life that's the question Where are we going to do that? Where they do that? How to stop people from treating you, from mistreating you. You got to let them know that not only do I not like that, and I told you about that, and you kept doing that, but guess what? I'm not going to stand for that. Now, I don't want to, you know, I'm not going to promote violence or anything like that because that really is not, that won't really stop people from mistreating you. It may stop people from confronting you, but it won't necessarily stop people from mistreating you. You know, a lot of times when we are dealing with this 
kind of thing. We're dealing with people that we don't really want to push out of our lives. We just want them to treat us better. And there are some things that we can do that we just fail to do. If your family member, if your family members depend on you constantly, constantly, you are the if you're the money man or the money woman or the person in your family that everybody always thinks has money, how do you keep them from coming to you all the time and borrowing? Borrowing, asking, asking, borrowing, never paying back. I'll see tomorrow then. I will need a couple of more dollars than I borrowed already before. And I know that if I wait a little longer that you are, or should I say you're going to submit again. And who am I not to do that to you? And I will do it another day because I know that you are good for pay and I ain't got to pay you back no way unless I want a little bit more. But I stay in your pockets wondering where you got that stuff that you got like a stocking. It's every day Christmas and birthdays for you. And I am about to come through. I need a couple of days to stay in your crib and I know that I'll get my way And Well... There are times when you got to put the brakes. Sometimes you got to put the unavailable sign up. And and it's hard. And I'm going to tell you why it's hard. I'm going to tell you one of the reasons why I think that it's hard. I think that it's hard because, you know, always being seen as the person that has money all the time is a form of respect. It's like, you know, shoot. Yeah, people know that I handle my business right. People know that I don't be fucking up my money. People know that I don't, you know, I ain't the one to 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 uh squander uh, squander my cash or whatever. But that's what other people um don't know. They don't they may not know that you don't have an unlimited cash supply. They don't know that you have bills that you have to pay. They don't know that the more you keep drawing from your stash, you won't have no stash. And if people aren't paying you back, then you're not really doing them a good, uh, uh, you're doing them a disservice because you're not teaching them to be responsible. Sure, it's good to be um, um, relied upon. And I'm sure that that makes you feel good and important. And But that's one of the reasons why people will stay in your pockets or they, they, or they will be slow to pay back or won't pay back or, or will mistreat you in that way. Because you are reveling And the fact that you are secretly happy to be able to oblige. But you want to bitch a little bit. So how are people supposed to treat you with respect when secretly respect ain't what you're looking for? You want to be the one. You want to be the one that everybody comes looking to. Look, man. There's a reason why people don't explore other options besides you. There are reasons for that. You keep obliging. You keep coming back. You keep allowing this. You keep letting them come through. You. You have not changed you. You haven't put the brakes on anything. You haven't put a stop to anything. You haven't limited yourself. Every time somebody fucks up, you bail them out. How is that going to make them do better? Oh, I f- I forgot you gave him the warning. Oh, this is the last time I'm gonna do this. Or you better not do this again. I'm I'm trying to no, you what you're doing is enabling them. You're enabling them to keep coming back to you to mistreat you. And you know a lot of times they aren't even grateful. Sometimes you don't even get a thank a thank you beyond the initial. Oh my, oh my God, thank you so much. I, 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 but when they get an American Music Award, a Grammy, or or, or an Emmy, or, or Oscar, do they shout you out? No. They be like, I want to give a shout out to God. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ works through me. I 
think in your shout outs at your award ceremony, I should come before Jesus. I know it sounds a little arrogant to try to come before Jesus. But when you needed the money time at the time, you didn't call on Jesus. You called on me. I'm the one who called on Jesus. All praise is due to Omar. All praise is due to Omar. Why not? We know that, that God is, is, is ultimately responsible for everything, but individually, you owe me $50. Now, how much you owe Allah? Sounds, stu sounds stupid, right? But how many times have you changed anybody by enabling them time at the time? How many times have people changed their behavior when you, when you bailed them out every time they fucked up? Every single time. And they were a consistent fucked up. Fuck up. Yeah, I'm not saying that they're not a good person, but they are mistreating you. And if you allow that mistreatment, if you never say anything about it, if you never step up to the plate and say, nah, uh-uh. Well, how can you reasonably expect for them to chill out? Ow. How can you reasonably expect them to stop doing what they do? How? How? Okay. No, it says if I hear my nickname, I immediately get ready to give a give and receive a hug. That's what's up. Sorry about this little blog talk situation, y'all. Man, I damn this would have been it would have been nice to have some calls today. You know what I mean? But my bad. I don't know how it happened. I have nothing. Nothing, I tell you. Nothing. Let me see. T. Carrie Wright says, excuse me, I say what I like and don't like. Some people are resent resentful of that honesty. Yeah, but the respect has to be there. You laid it out. You laid it out. Emily told myself, can you fix blog talk, please? Like you was calling it. But good looking out. Um, let's see. No, it says daily affirmation. I will have a beautiful day because I'm good enough. I'm smart enough. And doggone it, people like me. Sounds good. Carol says, this year I'm tired of being the go-to person. So I have closed that door. Well, ain't nobody tell you to be the go-to person in the first place. I told you about that years ago, but did you listen? No. That's what you get. And I'm not mistreating you. You was mistreating me by dissing me because you don't be listening. I feel bad. Real bad, you know what I'm saying? Anyway. <laughs> Guess is that not me not doing it that anymore. Okay, all right. I will treat people how they treat me. <laughs> uh -oh. Stacy White says some young adult people need some humble pie. I'll say, what's the opposite of humble pie? What's that arrogant pie? Was it like prideful pie? Give me some of that pride pie. Pride cake. Cal says, my shout out should be right up there with God because he enabled me to help you. I'm just saying. Was you saying that at the same time? I'm just getting to y'all comments. This is crazy. Y'all going to stop making me look like I'm biting. That's what y'all going to do. Y'all going to stop making it seem like I'm biting because I don't bite. 
No, I said, here's a good one. Last week, a young Lyft driver thought I was a thought it was a good idea for his conversation to drop me off. I mean, for his convenience to drop me off across a busy street from my destination. Oh yeah. Oh. Oh yeah. Well, that's the good thing about Lyft. Wow. Hold on. Blog talk like, all right, you're done. You're done, son. Oh, but this is what I'm going to do. Check out what I'm going to do. Peep what I'm going to do, though. Check, check, check this. Check, check it out. I, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm fix their little red wagon. I'll fix their wagon. Hold on. Hold on. Because now y'all making me, I'm thinking now that maybe it was blog talk. Because any other time it gives it gives a warning about when the show is about to end, right? Any other time. So what what what, what to go on and do now? How much time we got left? I'm going to say this. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Say. Hold on. How to stop someone from Miss Treating you hard, you urban therapy with soon with soul. Okay. 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 And this should do it. This should do it. Boom. Mm hmm. That's right. Yeah. So y'all be able to call in in, a, in about a few minutes. A few minutes. Yeah, y'all be able to call in, man. Call, call, call in. Well, this shit is acting weird. Come on, man. Come on, man. Ah, ah. Okay. We ain't got all day blog talk. And it's not even really blog talk. It's my damn browser. Let's go. What is going on with this bullshit? Let's go. All right, there we go. Taking all day. Come on, we in the middle of a war here. For your show now, press one. To hear important instructions, press two. The hell? Your show will go live in five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Love Talk Radio. Hold on. The only thing about it is I probably have to do this twice. 
because when I call in directly on the first joint, it don't be working. So it'd be like, you don't hear nothing. So you got to do it twice. I, I don't know. It's, it's something that I figured out many years ago. If you're show now, press one to hear important instructions. Since it appears you're calling back into a live show, we are reconnecting you now. All right, y'all can call in now if if you so desire. If you call, if you want to call into the show now, you can call in. Now the lines are open. Now you can do it. 319-527-6199. Don't everybody call at once. I don't see nobody calling. Y'all was just capping. Y'all was just fronting. You know what I mean? Y'all mistreating me. Y'all be mistreating me. I don't know why. Anyway. Anyway, let's keep it going. So, so... All right. Uh, as the show goes on, I guess we should really start getting into how to uh, how, go deeper into how to stop people from how to change other people's behavior. You know, uh, I wanted to go into it a little bit more about changing your own, changing yourself, changing your own behavior to where as you can reasonably expect somebody else to change theirs. Um, but um, as far as changing somebody else's behavior, uh, co being consistent. Being consistent. First, you first you come through with the presentation. Are y'all trying to call in? And something happened. Let me see. God damn it. Let me see. Let me see. Make sure we are here. Let me make sure that we good. Call, I'll call myself. Uh, can y'all hear me? I need to know if y'all can hear me. You feel me? See if I can hear myself. Yeah. Okay. That's all I need to know. That's all I needed to know. All right. We good. We good. Press number one if y'all would like to speak, and then I will call you out by the last four digits of your telephone number, and we can uh, we can get this conversation popping. So, yeah. Now changing other people is going to involve involve being consistent. First, you have to present yourself, letting people know. Uh, well, communicating that you like something or you, or that you dislike something. From there, then you have to check check to make sure that people are in compliance. You know, if you see that people are in compliance from the beginning, then then you're going to probably have to make a, a, a alternative moves. I would suggest representing, like, like I told you. Remember when I told you before that I didn't like this, that, and the third. Well, I still don't like it, and you're still doing it. So, you know, could you please discontinue it? Or this, do we have something further to talk about? Like, what's going on? Holla at the God. Let me know. I see that we have a call on the line. Call up with the last numbers, 8658. Welcome to the Urban Therapy with Sun Show. Thank you for holding. What's on your mind this this just call them to see if it's really working. You know what? Stop playing with me. <laughs> I was, hey, look, I was hoping you test this out, okay? You can't you do that. Stop being so ungrateful. <laughs> You've been treating me, and I don't like it. I told you about that I'm before. Being mistreated. You know, you're not. I'm being mistreated. I done told you before <laughs> about how you have to treat me. I don't remember. You got to handle me with, with kid gloves. Stop playing. You already know. <laughs> I need I need $75. I'm glad you called it. Uh, nope. The door is closed. Fresh for 2022. I need $75, but that's the all door, I need. The door is closed. If I know anybody, $75 is <laughs> paying gangster interest. <laughs> I'm just saying. 
<laughs> you, you lent everybody else the money. Why why you shut down the bank when it's time for me to get a withdrawal? Or when I need a loan? Because uh, the bank was closed. They robbed it. They robbed it. Uh, that ain't right. You know, that's the, I, I feel like I feel like a white person. Why should I have to pay for what my ancestors did? I ain't never, I ain't never uh, enslaved here nobody. We here we go. Here we go. <laughs> my people. <Anywho. laughs> This thing about mistreating people, mm -hmm. I honestly think that goes back to the way people are raised. And I say that because if you live in a household with people who do nothing but mistreat each other, it's a learned behavior. Yeah. Now, maybe I'm wrong. No, I think you might be on to something with that. Wrong. It's just like anything else that goes on in your household. It's a learned behavior. Right. And if you're allowed to get away with it, you do it. Well, see, you know, mm -hmm. go ahead. Well, I was going to say the things that you learn when you're really young um, are not only just learned behavior, but those are the hardest things to break away from because those are the things that you are taught are either appropriate or inappropriate. So if you have been taught that inappropriate things are OK or that they are or that they are appropriate, it makes it a little harder, actually much harder, to finally correct them. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. If somebody has been, but you, but I, I'll tell you this though: whether you learn that something is right or wrong, you're going to recognize and acknowledge how it makes you feel. So maybe you were taught that, for example, being called a bitch or a hoe is is okay. As long as they are so-called playing. But maybe every time you hear that, it makes you it, you know it makes you cringe. You might not like it. So do you know how many kids grow up in households with their parents calling them those kind of names? It's amazing, ain't it? It's crazy. It really is. It, it really it, it's bad. You know, bad. Yeah. Yeah, they refer to their kids to other people. Oh, that B. Oh, that little hoe. She thinks she's swift. Man, that's how you feel about your kids. And then you expect them to go out into the world and know the difference. And, and, and the worst part about it is sometimes they're not even bitches or hoes. Sometimes. Exactly. So I've heard people say, oh, that's just a term of endearment. Well, don't be endearing me. Okay. For a three-year-old? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> but you know, you got them ratchet people out here. Yeah. That's what they like. Yeah. So, you know, when you're dealing with something like that, when you're dealing with a situation like that, it's going to be, it, it makes it extra challenging because you may not even recognize how how to be treated fairly or to be treated in a good way you might not know if you think that if yeah, everybody most people don't yeah so so most people don't when you've been treated that way all your life you think that that's the way you're supposed to be treated and that's why you keep allowing it yeah plus you think that everybody does that you hear people say that all the time exactly. well everybody around me that's how everybody that's how it was that's how it was where I grew up. That's how it was, you know, when I grew up. That's how it was in my house. That's how it was around the way. That's how it was back in the day. I'm like, yeah. I mean, if you didn't like well, it back in the day. Mm -hmm. But some things back in the day, how you grew up or whatever, were more positive. But that negative stuff. You got to break away from that. So what? You were raised that way, but didn't you grow up and learn that that wasn't accept acceptable? Right. And that's I mean, the that's the question. Again, it's learning. Mm -hmm. And I don't I don't abide by that. Well, that's how it was in my room. I don't buy it. When, Not at all. Yeah, because when you when you, you can't make me believe. Mm -hmm. That's the right way to do things. When you when you witness when, when you witness abuse in your family, when you witness abuse um 
uh, of let's say your mom or your dad or whatever. Let's say your dad was always hitting on your mom or 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 putting her down, insulting her, berating her, you know that kind of stuff. You may recognize that I don't think you know daddy ain't being nice, but they love each other, so I guess it's okay. You know what I mean? You can get that wrong impression, or but but you also know how it makes you feel. Like uh, it's not being nice, but yeah, I, I get it. That's the way it is. So, is it is it cool to let your kids think that that uh, that uh, adults who are in a in a marriage or or in a romantic situation don't talk nice to each other? I don't see how that can be cool. But yeah, you know, you you already given the given the first example that they have of love in the wrong way, the total total wrong way. So, you know, how are they gonna? How are they going to treat anybody else that they're dealing with later on when they grow up and, and they're able to make their own decisions? How, how can they be expected to make a decent, well-informed or, or uh, to treat somebody in a, in, a, in a good way when they haven't learned it themselves? And it's been accepted by more, more people than, than it hasn't been in their life anyway. <laughs> Well, you know, without going into a long, lengthy story, my mom passed when I was six, so we were kind of shuff, shuff, shuffled back and forth between different family members who claimed that they wanted us. One particular aunt, in, in her way, and I learned this later on in life, that she grew up as an abused child. Mm. So mentally and physically, we were abused. Then along came, I called him my knight in shining armor. You know, my grandmother got in touch with my dad's brother and said that, you know, you need to come and check on these kids because she's really abusing these kids. And that stems from a situation with one of my brothers, my youngest brother, where he was being abused. I was sent to the store. Instead of going to the store, I went to my grandmother and I told her. She in turn called my uncle, who I called my dad, because I never knew my biological dad. Mm -hmm. I think that the abuse, physical and mental, as crazy as it may sound, would be a better person. I think because I knew that that was not how people were to be treated. Mm -hmm. You know, now maybe for some people that may not have been, that may not have clicked that way. But for me, it did. I never, I don't like of child abuse. I don't like people who abuse children. Yeah. I have stopped talking to people that call their mothers a bitch. And they say, oh, well, I'm just playing. How did you play like that? Mm -hmm. You know, again, I think that that's what made me a better person and made me think more about everybody else's feelings, including my own. Mm -hmm. You know, my grandma used to always tell me, if you want to be treated a certain way, you have to make people treat you that way. You cannot allow people to step on your toes. Mm -hmm. You can't allow people to piss on you and tell you it's wrong. <laughs> you know, you just can't. There are boundaries. If you don't set them, people won't respect them. Right. That's so, true. You know. That's true. You got to draw the line somewhere. You the, got to. The part of the problem you is. Know, the old saying, you you know the old saying, my pop used to say it all the time, you give a nigga an inch, you take a yard. Yeah. Well, and that's so true. When you don't know where the line is supposed to be, you're not going to be able to draw it. You know, you may you may make, make a guess, but you're probably not going to get it right. Hold on a second. We got a, uh, we have another call on the line. Call it with the last number, 7605. Welcome to the Urban Therapy with Sun Show. Thank you for holding. What's on your mind this this? afternoon good afternoon 
I actually um, agree with the wise and wonderful other caller as far as conditioning is concerned. And unfortunately, in my opinion, that, that, that conditioning leads us to, um, especially nowadays, suffer in silence with this, this idea that if you like speak up for yourself and say, hey, what you're doing is wrong, how you're treating me is wrong, now you're overly sensitive. So now, like these days, we have a lot of people that sit in there, it's not, like, not saying anything and letting people mistreat them because they don't want to be seen as being overly sensitive. Right. <clears throat> right. You know, so there's, there's, a, there's a lot a lot going on. I still say that if, you know, you, you don't like what people are doing or saying to you, you have to say something. And who cares if they like it or if they don't? Because otherwise, you're just going to be sitting there upset, you know, depressed, or however, you know, you respond to it um, as, you, as you let somebody, you know, mistreat you. So at, at, at one point, it's their fault. At another point, it's your fault if you're not doing anything about it. Mm-hmm. Let me, let me, let me ask you a question. If in a situation like being at work, if you feel like your supervisor, managers or other coworkers are, are mistreating you, what do you, what would you suggest or how would you suggest that somebody handles themselves in that situation? Like for, for example, if, if your employer consistently threatens to fire you or doesn't seem to be appreciative of the job that you're doing, being overly critical or whatever, or keeping you on edge to the point where where they're making you feel like your, your job is constantly in jeopardy. How, how would you suggest that a person handle that situation? I have been in that position before, and um, it was very, very, very difficult uh, situation, especially since there are a lot of people um, of color at my job. So what I uh, what I did initially uh, is I sent an email like, "Hey, listen, you know, I understand these are the expectations." Um, I understand this is where I may or may not have fallen short. These are my intentions as far as improving my position, you know, my, my, whatever I'm responsible for. Because I started a paper trail. So my, my, the first thing I would suggest is to create a, a paper trail, um, outlining, um, some of the stuff that's been going on, but in a professional way. Because eventually a situation like that at your job is going, it could, you know, HR might have to get involved and you want to be able to show that, you know, you were addressing the situation directly with that person first. That's what HR usually expects. They, they, they want to see that you guys, you try to reach a resolution directly with that person and then that, that person continues to behave a certain way. Mm -hmm. And once they continue, once, once you're able to prove that, hey, you know, I, recognize that there was an issue i tried to resolve it and this person still behaved a certain way now it the burden of, of proof falls on the other person okay so but you definitely have to say something you can't not say anything otherwise that person can then build a case against you um being insubordinate or not compliant as far as your job responsibilities right now the way I um the way I interpret part of what you're saying is you have to sort of let them know the, what the benefits are to treating you better because there's liability that's at stake, you know. And and um well let's let's say it's a if if there's a situation going on where you feel like let's say like um in sports, in sports, that's one of the most visible, visible uh, uh, jobs that I've ever seen where people know if you've been fired or not. You know what I mean? And other, in other areas, in other industries, 
only the people who work at your job know that you've been let go or or terminated or whatever, disciplined or, or anything. In sports, people know when you've gotten traded. They know when you've quit. They know when you've transferred, you know, that kind of stuff. So mm-hmm. I know that that there are athletes out there that are really stressed out over being put on put, put on the trading block because it's a form of being fired. But mm-hmm. it's not a um it's what it's not. And and you can you can straighten me out on this if you disagree, because maybe maybe I'm on the fence about this. It's not a form of somebody devaluing you. you they may figure that you're not valuable to this team. But you definitely have value because we wouldn't be able to trade you if you didn't have any value. You understand what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I understand what you mean. Mm-hmm. I sort of think you think think, think differently, but um, you know, sometimes <laughs> it is at least in let's say football. Yeah. You know, it is a, a case where you're being devalued. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, because because of your age, maybe because you've had injuries, and sometimes. Um, you know, they look at your age or they look at the amount of injuries that you've had, even though you're performing well, they mm-hmm. still say, nah, you're not you part know, of the future. Here. It, 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 yeah. So to me, that's a form of mistreatment, especially if you put your time and you brought championships and all kinds of stuff, you know, mm-hmm. to, to your team. To me, that's a form of mistreatment. Um, it's not always. Sometimes it's just the numbers. Again, I'm talking about, you know, like basketball or, or, or football. Yeah. Sometimes it's just a numbers thing. Um, like, I'm sorry, but we don't have to do this because this is what we need. So we have to think about, you know, the, the status of the entire team, not just you. But other times, it most certainly is mistreatment. It is. When you're it's definitely treated. a form. So I was going to say that maybe getting your team to see how – or getting your job in in the overall case to see the value of keeping you rather than firing you, or if you if you want to um, take it to another another area, make them see the value of paying you more instead of instead of releasing you. That's a really that's a really hard thing in sports, but it's not that easy at your job at your current job either because they. Employers look at it like, well, I got you for this this price, and so I'm going to try to manipulate a way to keep you for this price. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So sometimes you have to put yeah. the you have to put the threat out there, and I and I say and I use the word threat lightly because I mean it's not a threat. You got to mean it. You got to mean <laughs> right. it. You know, if we if we're talking about how to get somebody to treat you to to stop mistreating you you have to let them know like well, this is what you have because i'm here this is what you're going to lose mm-hmm. when i'm gone now the decision is yours i need more i need more money i need better work conditions i need uh i need people to be off my back i need a better workspace i need a new desk whatever the whatever the 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 thing is that's needed in order for in order to improve your your situation, physical or financial, you have to let them know what that is. Now, if they don't want to comply with it, then you know you have to make a move. And that's one of the reasons that you cannot bluff. If you want someone to treat you better, or if you want someone to stop mistreating you, you can't keep rewarding them for treating you the exact same way that you warned them yep. not to treat you. You can't keep letting it go on. As if, as yeah. if they're not noticing that you didn't do nothing about it. Like a bully, a bully at school or anywhere is not going to stop bullying you because they got tired of uh, bullying you, bullying you, or because they've had a about with uh, what do they call it when when you have a uh, like a sort of like a a spiritual awakening to where you you want to do right now. What do you call it? Uh, You're not talking about an epiphany. You want to tell them? No, no epiphany. That's the that's the girl who used to be on the show uh, back in 2012. <laughs> um, you know, we, 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 we traded her. We traded her to another blog. 
Oh God! I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm talking about. I'm talking about when when somebody realized they've been doing bad for a long time, and and all of a sudden they want to start doing better. Like 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 Scrooge had. No. Okay. I understand what you're saying. Yeah, there's there's a there's a there's a direct term for it, and once again, I, it's not coming to me. Uh, not a leap of faith. Yeah. Anyway, they're not going to stop doing what they're doing because it's been working, and it's hard to change a person from doing something that's working to something that they don't know might work or not. You know what I mean? So I want to. Yeah, go ahead. You you mentioned I want to go back to the job thing for a second because some of these jobs, if they feel like you don't like, okay, so okay, so some jobs they they they'll look at their employees and they're like, you know what, they 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 feel like their employees don't really have much of a choice, um, but to put up with their bullshit, and so um, I, that's why I wanted to go back to that as far as coming up with a solution for people who are in that in that predicament where their job is like, hey, I I like I know y'all need this job, so we're pretty much gonna treat you however we feel like treating you. Right. And you're gonna take it because you don't have much of a choice and you're gonna like it. Or you're not gonna like it, but you're still gonna take it. So like what what should people do in that in that um and when they're in that predicament? One thing I suggest when when you're talking about at work, you have to let them know that you are qualified for your position or or more than qualified for that for that um for that position and that there are other industries other bosses other companies other places that will that will treat you better um 90 seconds uh, emotionally and financially like they're not the only game in town um in this pandemic situation it has gotten tricky for a lot of people because people have mm-hmm. have really been out of work and they've they've been out of work for extensive um, um length lengths of time and and they haven't been able to basically go down the street and get another job so they they've been kind of stuck 60 seconds so some jobs have uh, have relayed to their employees that you're lucky to, you're lucky to have a job well, we're all lucky to have a job, yeah. but none of us got a job by luck. And mm-hmm. sometimes you have to remind them. But this is part of follow through, because if you don't believe in mm-hmm. what you, if, if you don't believe in in who you are, what you are, what your capabilities and and abilities are, then they're gonna people are gonna be able to sense whether you are confident or not. And they yeah. will capitalize on that if you don't, if you don't make sure that you make them aware that you are confident in yourself, or that you will make a move regardless. One of the tools that we had, that a lot of uh, um, um, people had at their disposal during the pandemic, was the PUA. Well, I ain't got to work. You know, you if you fire me, I'm some of some of us are going to make more money than we were making now. Well, now we don't have that cushion. People don't have that cushion of the PUA money, so they sort of feel like they have to stick with or be stuck with the deplorable uh, work conditions that they are a part of now. But it doesn't have to be that way. If you do a good job, now if you're a slacker, if you're a person that probably doesn't have enough fuel in the tank to be able to command your own price and to make any kind of demands besides being treated with respect, that's one thing. But if you are a person that shows up every day, is always ready to go, works works um, your job and does your job to completion, and 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 is is a conscientious worker and and, and has respect for the for the uh, job that you do. I wouldn't worry a whole lot about the consequences of 
of making making certain demands. Just make sure that you're business like. Make sure that you're business like and professional. And by that I mean make sure that you don't just go in there like yo, it's either him or me. Either they go or I go. That's not what you want to do. What you want to do is say, listen, this is what I'm bringing. This is what this is what you get dealing with me. This is what I'm taking away from you when I leave. Now the choice is yours. And I can give you 48 hours to 70. I can give you uh, 24 to 78. I'm mean, uh, 72 hours to make a decision because that's what I'll be making mine. At my job, um, well, they weren't willing to listen to uh, individual individuals um, who all who are overqualified for our position. Um, so what we had to do um, was to put together uh, a proposal. We went to the board meeting, presented you know our case. Uh, we had to actually band together as a group and be like, hey, listen, this is this is what we we like and what we don't like. This is how we, we feel like we're being treated. Um, and then so now it was like, you know how they say we is a stronger word than I. Um, it was a, it was a case like that where okay. it had to be a whole group of us to say this is a problem. And if this problem isn't addressed, then now you have. 153 people out of your 768 employees that are willing to walk. Mm -hmm. That's um, called the United so that, that, Yes. And so that, that was something that definitely made an impression um, on my particular job. I work in education. Um, and so um, that definitely made a, made a difference. And we started seeing some changes here and there. But when we were all reaching out individually and professionally, they weren't even trying to hear that. They really, some of, some of us, not me, they, they know better than to say that to me. But you know, the whole, you're lucky to have your job thing. So, yeah. Um, but they, they most certainly relate that message like, hey, listen, so there are a lot of people during this pandemic that don't have a job. And you still need somebody to teach these kids, bro. So if we all walk, who's going to teach these babies? Yeah, mm -hmm. recognizing your power, recognizing your power is something that you have to do in business. You have to because they recognize and exercise their power at every turn. You have to think the way they mm -hmm. do and you have to employ some of the tactics that they employ. So I get it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some people with a subject like this, when you, you, you look at it and you're like, okay, first thing you think about are your personal relationships you know with between family members or significant other but there are so many other ways <laughs> that mm -hmm. you can be mistreated out in this world mm -hmm. and we we really just have to know how to come uh, combat it otherwise we'll be li living miserable lives walking around here upset and, and 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 not doing anything about it cool you know it's funny you should say about um, presenting somewhat of the United Front before I retired. And this is just a little quite different from what you're saying. But they offered the older people or people with longer tenure on our job the option to take a buyout. So a lot of people didn't. You had to be 55 years old with at least 10 years of service. Mm -hmm. So they put it out there. And I don't think that they expected the response that they got. Because within 48 hours, 512 of us decided, we out of here. Those first two years after those 512 of us left was hell for them. Because what they did was they shot themselves in the foot because all the knowledge walked out the door. You had all these new people who knew nothing. Hmm. Yeah. And I personally got text messages, emails, phone calls, you know, 
do you ever remember this? Do you remember this? And this went on for the first six months after I left. You know, but again, they shot this up in the foot because they thought, oh, we probably get 10, 15, maybe 100 people a walk. No, boo boo. 512 of us walked. Mm. Mm-hmm. And those that didn't walk, that had that tenure and chose not to walk, what did they do to them? They found a way to fire them. <gasps> oh, yeah. They went back in people's records. And they found ways of getting rid of them. That uh, couldn't do, nothing could be done about it. And I ain't talking about a small company. This is one of your larger companies in the state of Pennsylvania mm-hmm. and in the city of Philadelphia. Yeah. All right. Well, we got to get out of here. You dirty. I mean, John, mm-hmm. listen, you think of, you got to think like the, the you got to think like the check writer. That's it. These jobs don't care about exactly. you personally. You know, I mean, people be thinking that these that these jobs are, are are designed to actually care about people's livelihoods and 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 their ways of life. They don't. It's a money game. Mm-hmm. So you have to think the way that they think. Mm-hmm. They don't care about you. Stop caring about them. Keep keep it business. Never personal. Yeah. Simple as that. Always. Y'all pay me more. I stay. Y'all don't pay me what I need, I go. That's it. I don't care about personal relationships on the job. And I, I know I don't care about that. I'm like, look, I'll get everybody's number. I, I'll call y'all. You know what I mean? Bust it up with y'all. Maybe we can still meet, you know, um, uh, after work, all that kind of stuff off the job. Other than that, I'm out of here. Deuces. I'm go, I go to who pays the most. Who pays the most? And who yeah. um who will work honestly who will work me the least and who will benefit me the most. That's it. That's it. That they don't call they don't call it a job for nothing. They ain't call it a exactly. pleasure. They ain't call it a play. <laughs> a play a or a pleasure. It definitely ain't a party. <laughs> you don't get up and go to play. You don't get up and go to pleasure. You get up and go to work at a job. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, listen, I, f- I have no, I feel no guilt or problems concentrating on nothing but the money at work. Nothing but the money. Nothing. Not one single thing. You know, they were trying to throw me off like, well, don't you care about the people that you service and all that? That comes with the job. I do that. I do all that. All that's included in the price. <laughs> but other than that, nah. Nah. <laughs> like y'all, y'all said that I have to provide um, a, um excellent customer service. I did that, but don't 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 ask me if I care. Did I do it? Well, did you I held do it up right? your end of the bargain. That's right. You held up your end of the bargain. Did no. they? No. Hey, listen. Mm-hmm. They pay, I stay. They no pay, I go away. You pay, <laughs> I stay. You no know, pay, I go away. You're not going to mistreat me. I work hard. I bust ass. I do things for you that a slave wouldn't do. And I'm not going to be no slave. You got to pay this slave more than just corn and exactly. peas and <laughs> yep. shit. With I you. went on to get another pension. <laughs> uh, look, man. I went back to work and got another pension. Yeah. These, these, these jobs is on some other shit. But listen, y'all, we gotta get on the body here. But I appreciate y'all calling in. I really, really do. We're gonna do these birthday shout outs and then we out of here. Y'all enjoy the rest of your day. You too. Thank you. All right. You too. Peace. Lovely, just lovely. They weren't they great, huh? Huh? No, huh? Huh? Oh, bravo. Bravo. We have some birthday shout outs to do. Some people were born on this glorious, glorious, glorious. 
January 9th, and they deserve to be acknowledged. So let's go about our business of acknowledging them and making them feel special because they are special because they are special because they are S T E C I A L. They get the R E S P E C T. They are S E C I A L. They get the R E S P E C T. They are S P E C I A L. They get the R E S P E C T. They get number one out the box. Chocolate Ang- Angel Smith. Chocolate Angel Smith. Happy birthday to you. I hope that today finds you in good health, happiness, mind, body, and spirit. You rock out, rock on and do the, the damn, 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 do the, do the, do the, do the damn thing. And also Dorothy Taylor turning 65 years old today. And Ricky Frazier, Ricky L. Frazier turning 41 years old today. And Crystal Collins, happy birthday to you. And Joyce Thomas turning 78 years old today. And Casey Belin Castillo, I guess that would be Casey. Casey Belin Belin Castillo turning 34 years old today, and Toya Francis turning 59 years old today, and Katie Marie Hendrickson, happy birthday to you, and Kickback Baby turning 48 years old today, and Linda Smith, vegan Linda Smith. She has a restaurant up in Germantown, Germantown Avenue. And Johnson Street, what's a what's a Linda something creation something like that health healthy something like that. good people definitely is a is a master chef at the vegan vegan food good stuff good stuff um, and also Deborah Kofer turning sixty eight years old today happy birthday to you and my man he's something like a father but he's a father to my to my mans and them, Oliver Jessup Sr., my man. Happy birthday to you and, and, and last but not least, certainly not least, my cuz, my love, Simone Moses, affectionately known to the family as Dump. 90 seconds. And Dump was short for Dumpling. That's what my uncle used to call it, my late great Uncle Horace. I want to say happy birthday to you. I want to say happy birthday to all of you and anyone else out there who shares this birthday on this glorious Glory is glorious. January 9th, anywhere out there in the world, worldwide, internationally, and universally. All of y'all go ahead and turn up. Turn up. But don't turn up too loud. Just turn up loud enough so everybody can rock out. Rock on and do the damn, the damn, the rock out. Rock on and do the, the, do the damn, rock out. Rock on and do the damn thing. You do your thing. Y'all represent the queens and kings. You do your thing. Y'all represent the queens and kings. Good things happen to those who wait. Great things happen to those who grind. And any, 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 anything can happen to those who go for theirs. So go hard, go for yours, and remember, you want to stop somebody from mistreating you, you're going to have to do more than just treat them well. Because it might already be too late. You can change yourself. You can change yourself, which will change your energy, which will change people's approach to you. That's something that you can definitely do, something you can definitely control, something you can definitely get into. And as you do that, as you change yourself, also change your communication skills. Open up your communication skills. Make the conscious decision to relate, relate to people what you want and what you don't want, what you like and what you don't like, and follow through. Make sure that people are treating you the way that you want to be treated. Ask other people the way they want to be treated and follow through with that too. Treat them the way they want to be treated. You know, try to build a system of mutual respect. Try not to let things progress to the point where where being treated better would be a total overhaul. That's what you don't want to do. Of course, there's more to this. And I'm not trying to oversimplify these things, but what I'm trying to do is give you something that you can do. I'm trying to get you some uh, uh, in, in some techniques that you can employ. I'm trying to, to lay a path that you can travel on. Work at it. Anything that you want, you have to work at it. You don't have to be a Charlie Brown out here, man. Everybody was always disrespecting Charlie Brown. I br- 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 brown, brown. Well, that, ain't, that don't have to be you. You can change all of that. And I would implore you to do that. Peace to all my day ones, my everydays, and my brand news. 
I love y'all to death, resuscitate y'all, I love y'all back to life. Make sure that people don't get comfortable making you uncomfortable. You don't have to get violent about it. You don't have to get loud about it. All you have to do is do the thing that gets you the most respect, which is following through. Because you can't disrespect consistency. You know what happens when you disrespect the, the fact that a, a, a bus, train, or plane takes off at a, at a certain time, will arrive at a certain time, and depart at a certain time? You know what happens when you disrespect that? You get left behind. And that may be exactly what you have to do with the people who aren't making you feel good about yourself the way that you deserve to. They may have to be left behind. They have little respect. They're showing little respect and you have to do whatever you need to do in order to be consistent and garner respect. Major, major respect. All right, y'all. I want y'all to have a great day. No exceptions. No exceptions at all. Um, make sure that y'all hit that like button. Make sure that y'all share the show. Make sure that y'all subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet. It's been a pleasure on my end. Let me get Blog Talk on up out of here. Oh, yes, we will. Oh, yes, yeah, yes, we will. And, and for my Instagrammers, you will five slam my jammer. Thanks for coming on through and let me exercise my grammar. If I you using Blog Talk Radio. Goodbye. And for my YouTubers, you know just how we do, but thanks for coming on through. See you on the other side, my boobas. All right, y'all. Peace. Much peace. <laughs>